It's no secret when David Rhodes published his fourth novel, Driftless, last fall, critics were especially enamored with Rhodes' own personal story, his biography. Rhodes graduated from the University of Iowa's Writers Program in, I think it was 7071, and he published three novels in short succession, and they were really well received. John Gardner named John David Rhodes as one of the best eyes for detail in fiction, and the New York Times Book Review actually uh, called, I think it was a second novel, they compared it to Sherwood Anderson's classic Winesburg, Ohio. And then, in 1976, Rhodes suffered a motorcycle accident that left him paralyzed from the chest down. And he, he went quiet. He didn't publish any further books for three decades. Although he did keep on writing. He's told uh, an interviewer that he published three novels that um, he says will never see the light of day. But one that did see the light of day is this one, from Milkweed Editions. It is such an uncommon novel in a lot of ways, and I'm not even sure where to start with it. It is, first of all, set in Words, Wisconsin, a rural area that's rural even by rural standards. <laughs> it's in the southwest corner of Wisconsin, and it's in what's called the Driftless region, and this is where the book gets the title, as this um, bit of a rhapsody that is the book's first section. The glaciers that once covered North America uh, somehow kept this particular corner of Wisconsin free from drift or glacial debris. And it is a place where some of the strangest and um, edgiest and most compelling characters that I've met in a while uh, make their home in this novel. The main character is July Montgomery. He is the thread that uh, ties the events of the novels together, the people of the novel together. He's a catalyst for a lot of the action that happens, but this is the interesting thing. He He's actually the character we know the least about. We actually get to know July more by getting to know uh, his community, getting to know all the different kinds of people that he lives among, and certainly a lot about this particular place, this landscape. July Montgomery is actually a character from one of Rhodes' previous novels. I hadn't read this. I found this out uh, after I was, you know, looking up some information about the book after I finished it. And I think it's a testament to the author's talent that I couldn't tell. It, July Montgomery seemed truly authentic to this particular book as the drifter turned farmer in this uh, in this uh, novel. It is also a unique book because it is um, kind of a landscape book. I think when I say that a lot of people will presume it's boring, but I think that's only because that rural life has been so maltreated, if it exists at all, in, uh, in the literary world. Usually when you see uh, rural settings um, in fiction, you see it in a sort of sentimentalized Lake Wobegon, Garrison Keillor kind of way, or else you see it as a, an ingredient that's intended to give some character a previous grit. Country landscapes are used as um, places for, you know, escape or badass training <laughs> for other novels. This is one of the few that I've met that have taken it seriously and give it its due, it's full of nuance, full of threat, full of action, full of sorrow, full of you know, the full scope of human experience. <laughs> this is, um, the characters we meet here are in a lot of different life situations. There is the couple who has uh, discovered corruption at their, the milk cooperative, a major agribusiness company that they've been selling milk to for years. There is a cougar that's lurking around town. That one particular character has decided that he is going to be the one to, uh, dispose of once it discovers the cougar's taking up shop in his barn. Um, there is another character who is intensely religious and hasn't walked in years. She lives with her sister who's caretaking her and this uh, woman discovers that she wants to have a, a direct experience with God and to kind of get it going she decides to uh, gamble away $40,000 and uh, her, her and her sister's home and she also takes up with a younger man who takes her to a dog fight. It's such a, it's, the, the novel is hilarious in a lot of ways. A lot of my affection for this novel is fueled by uh, nostalgia for the landscapes that I grew up in in uh, uh, the southwest corner of Michigan. A lot of this, like 
cougar sightings, like Amish people, like that pride of place, the way that uh, conversations don't have many words, but they do have a lot of drinks of coffee and a relationship builds nonetheless. I felt really enamored of, of how Rhodes really gives us all the attention and all the love that um, it deserves. One gentle critique that I will offer of the novel is that I feel like Rhodes is at his best when he's spending time narrating with a, with a, his characters. He does, it's a little bit weaker when he has the, his characters in dialogue. Some of them are pitch perfect, I, I, so I want to definitely give them their due. Particularly, I thought the dialogue of Rusty, that cougar fighting farmer. But there are others where it felt a little um, explanatory and essayistic. One couldn't help but wonder if perhaps the author felt a bit compelled to put some of his own words into their mouths. But nonetheless, that that small bit it doesn't doesn't take away from a very serious, gorgeous, funny, and really beautiful novel. It's been called by the Chicago Tribune as one of the best works of fiction to come out of the Midwest in many years. I think that's very true, but while Rhodes is a Midwestern novelist, he is also a universal novelist. I want that, I think that should go without saying, but I said it. <laughs>